In this video, I'll be introducing you to Word documents in an organizational Office 365 program. Sometimes this is referred to as SharePoint, as that is the server that Microsoft uses to host organizations Office 365. I'm using Chrome if you want to follow along and see things exactly as I do, but things will work similarly in other browsers as well. There are two ways to get Office 365. By going directly there in your browser, typing office.com. By going directly there in your browser, by typing office.com in the address bar. Or by using the list of Microsoft Services tool when you are in any Office 365 application. Let's start by logging to Office 365 with your college account. Microsoft gives us two sign-in links. You may use either. To use the college's Office 365 as opposed to your personal Outlook or Hotmail account, you'll use your college email address, except, and the part after the at sign, you will type vsc.edu instead of your college's domain. When you get to the college's authentication page, you'll sign in as you do for any of the college's online accounts. If this is your first time here in this manner, you may be asked if you want to stay signed in. If you're accessing this site from a computer that only you use, you may want to click the Do Not Show This Again, followed by the Yes button. Otherwise, choose No. Earlier I mentioned the List of Microsoft Services tool, and it is this tic-tac-toe icon in the top left of your browser. Notice when I click here, I get the same list of Office 365 applications and recent documents that I do here on the main page of office.com after I've logged in. This tool is visible when you're using any and all Office 365 applications. While I could click on the Word icon to make a new Word document, especially when I'm starting a new document, I like to choose where I'm going to file it first rather than make it and try to remember to file the file properly when I'm done. This is because I know where I'm going to make this document now. The File Manager tool in Office 365 is OneDrive. I will start by clicking that. Let's take a quick look at the OneDrive interface. Over on the left, I have major categories of all my files, like my computer on a desktop, recent files I have worked with, a list of files shared with me, these will have to be specifically shared, or I will have had to participate in editing them for them to show up here, and my trash or recycle bin. I can change the view of the files that show up on the main page by clicking the View Options button. If you prefer tiles, which are more of a visual display than an informative display, you should change your view to that. Or if you have tiles and you prefer the list view, you can switch to that. I already have a folder set up for this particular class that I'm adding a file to, so I'll navigate into my folders by clicking on them. I have a folder for all of my content for computer applications classes named properly. In that, I have a folder for each class. It's in this folder that I want a new Word document. You can see I can add my files by dragging them here. If you prefer working in the full-blown desktop version of Word, which has more features and tools, Office 365 enables that. You create your document and then drag the saved file onto the screen to upload it, or you can use the Upload button. In this case, I'm just going to start a new Word document, so I will click the New menu. In the menu, I get choices to make folders, Word documents, Excel workbooks, PowerPoint presentations, OneNote notebooks, forms for Excel, or to save links to documents elsewhere in SharePoint or on the web. I'll click Word to make one of these. The tab will become my new Word document. The top bar gives me the list of Microsoft Services tool, tells me I'm using Word Online, shows my name because it is my folder of documents on the college's SharePoint server, followed by the parent folder of this file. If I were to click on that link, it would take me back to that folder in OneDrive. In the middle of the blue bar, it says Document, M dash, Saved. Document is the current default name for my file, and Saved means all the work I've done so far is automatically saved on SharePoint. I like to start by naming my files. Since this is just an example, I'm going to save this as Making, Editing, Sharing, Test. 
and hit enter. Unlike files saved on your computer, you can use special characters like commas in your file names on SharePoint. If I go back to OneDrive now, my new document is there, along with a notation of the last time I edited it. In the list view, I can see not only when it was modified and who modified it, but you can also see that all new files start out as private. That means I'm the only one who can see and edit this file. Back to our Word file. Below the familiar blue Word bar is the tab menu and ribbon you're probably familiar with from any version of Word since 2010. You also might notice that it has fewer menu tabs and less content in the ribbon. That's because you can't do as much of the advanced word processing tasks that the full locally installed version of Office can do. That keeps the program small enough to manage over the internet. All of the computing other than displaying on your screen is handled on Microsoft's SharePoint server. These Office 365 programs do include all the tools most people use most of the time. And, unlike using Word or Excel installed on your desktop, they incorporate very powerful sharing tools. You can also access these files anytime, anywhere you have a computer connection to the internet. In order to even simulate cloud computing sharing with traditional Word, you'd have to be tracking changes, signing documents in and out, and more. And these are pretty advanced tasks for most computer users. With cloud computing, you and your coworkers can work on the same document simultaneously and always see the most current version in real time. Let's go back to making our document. Treat this document like any word processing program. Type some text. You can now use formatting tools on that text as you would in any word processing application. On the Insert tab, there are ribbon tools to add a picture. Or a table. Commenting is pulled out of the ribbon and made as a dedicated tool. Highlight the text that you want to comment on. Select the Comments button to open the comment panel on the right. Click New Comment and enter your comment. Since you're signed into SharePoint with your college account, your name will be associated with your comments. Use the tool in your comments to reply to a specific comment. Mark is done. Or to delete. You can close the comments menu by clicking the X at the top left of the tool or clicking on comments above. Clicking comments in the toolbar again will reopen the comments menu. There is a tool here on Office 365 which allows you to edit a document in full-blown Microsoft Word, clicking where it says Edit in Word. When done editing in that mode, you'll need to be sure to save your document back to OneDrive. But as long as you keep your editing in Office 365, you'll never need to save. In fact, you'll notice a complete lack of a Save button or the Save command because there is no such thing in cloud computing. Your work is saved as you do it. There is a Save As button in the backstage that allows you to make a copy, rename, or download in different forms. The real difference in Office 365 and SharePoint, though, comes from the Share tool. Here you have tools to set permissions at an organizational level or individually. You can set permissions for files and folders, so if you want to group people to have access to all the documents you put in a folder, you don't have to add them to every document. You can just set permissions for a folder. 
This is great for working in small groups and committees. Adding people individually to a file is as simple as adding their email address, the one they use within the community. Adding a note will help them understand what is being shared with them. You can also get the link for your file to share anywhere you please. Email, web pages, forum, or you can use Outlook to disperse your document to your contacts. When you want to return to your document, all you need to do is find that document again, either in OneDrive or using the Recents in the Office 365 Backstage. In the Office 365 Backstage of Word to open it in a new tab, and you can get right to editing that file again. If you find yourself in the Reading view of an Office 365 file, you'll need to click on Edit Document and choose the environment you want to edit in, online or off. To view the history of a document in OneDrive, right-click on the date or time, Right-clicking on the time or date in the Modified column will give you a menu which contains the version history. Here you can see the modifications to the document and, and who made them. And clicking on the time of any version, you can look at that version and see the changes.